exciting. Outsider art is a term used to describe the work of those separated from the artistic community by choice, circumstance, or in the case of New Zealand artist Susan King, mental illness. Now nearly 60, Susan was diagnosed with severe autism as a child and has not spoken since the age of four. This has not, however, stopped her from producing a large and intriguing body of work. I've had some experiences in my lifetime where you see something that might stop you in your tracks, but I still don't have the language to describe the extraordinary work that I saw and have continued to see. Susan King floated into my world from Lethfield at an exhibition that I had run and during the opening events there, this uh, wee girl, Slip of a Lass, came up and said to me, would you be interested in looking at my sister's work? Because Susan doesn't talk, people can sometimes think that she doesn't understand what's going on, but I think she's got this deep need to complete her work. In a person who had no verbal method of communication, to be able to communicate this powerfully visually is a tremendous achievement. I'm nine years younger than Susan and forever I've always remembered her drawings. We've got at least 4,000 drawings Mum stored everything. I don't remember anything ever being thrown away. The things that she draws, you can see for some of them where the inspiration is. There's a great deal of satisfaction when you can understand, when you see something and you think, oh, I know where that comes from. But a lot of it you don't understand and you're not sure where it comes from. I can remember her laughing when she's drawing. She used to hum, even though she doesn't talk, she used to hum quite a bit. A big grin all over her face. I don't know whether it's a cheeky thing or a rude thing that she's drawing when she's got a big grin on her face. One of the things about autism in terms of the way that experience is processed and brought together is that you often get a kind of a, a, a mash-up of, of real experience and experience from magazines and books and, and other kinds of media. So we have incredibly potent and, and poignant images of people who are clearly suffering. Um, one has to assume that at times um, that's, that's Susan seeing herself. Also a, a mixture of very intense emotions. There are many images of, of, of men with erect penises and they're not prurient images. They're actually just straightforward, undiluted, if you like, brute images of sexuality, of desire, things that uh, unable to be said in a verbal way, but which can be said really powerfully by this person in, in, in pictures. All I can say from having observed her is that when she's making her work, there is absolutely nothing else that gets in the way. You could be dancing naked on the table and you won't distract her. There's a focus that's, that's inspirational. It's about the making of the work. Um, she doesn't have any interest in, in where that work might go, though I must say I'm sure she's quite excited about seeing the work in frames and on walls and people hovering over it and looking at it. But she'd be very happy just to sit down and continue her drawing morning, noon and night. So that, there's that sense of an obsession of, um, to make work. <laughs> She's been art making since the age of four, and she's now, you know, no one to give a girl's age away, but she's 57 or 58. There was a period of 30 years uh, where she did nothing. She stopped suddenly. It was in conjunction with her going into quite a deep depression, which was quite unusual for Susan. Susan was going to a, a, a day school. I think Susan at that stage was about 24, 25 and her drawings were used to highlight a, a, a fate or a money-making event coming up at the school. Every year they choose one intellectually handicapped child to profile. So that year it was Susan, this was 1970, and they put publications of her drawings on the Herald. There was a lecturer at the Elam School of Fine Arts who found out about Susan's drawings. And the chap was just blown away by when these drawings and went straight down to the school. 
and said, this girl's got to come to the art school. And they said, oh no, she can't do that. She's too important. She makes mats that we sell in the shop. And at that point, um, they took all Susan's drawings, things, drawing things from her and she wasn't allowed to draw at school anymore. Susan stopped work for 30 years, just did nothing. It's a terrible, terrible story. And it was only years later that Susan's mother ran into a friend of the art lecturer in the street and who just said, oh, that was bad luck that Susan wasn't able to go to art school. And, it, and that was the first time that Susan's family knew of that offer. That's what actually brought on this great disappointment that entirely stopped her from drawing. And that's been right up through till last year when she started again. She's a different person, really. She's got a real spring about her, <laughs> you know. She's got a real purpose in life. I thought I'd go over to New Zealand, spend a couple of days with the archive, pick a show, bring it back here, put it up on the walls and done and dusted. And then you realise there are file after file after file. It's an extraordinary archive. And some of these drawings can be on um, a scrap of paper the size of a postage stamp. Others are four and five metres long. My hopes for this exhibition is that we're beginning to put Susan's work to the general public so that um, museums, that um, galleries would, would take an interest in this work. When people who are in the arts field specifically compliment aspects of her work, it means a lot. She really takes it on board and she really enjoys that. And um, that's amazing, that's really, really neat. It's a touching story, isn't it? And you can see Susan King's work at the Callan Park Gallery for self-taught and outsider art at the Sydney College of the Arts, but you'll have to hurry as it closes tomorrow.